You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Oh, welcome everybody back to the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou, and today... This is probably my favorite of the top five series we've been doing here on the Greeks Gridiron. We are going to be discussing the quarterback position and who I believe are the five best in the league from five to one. This is something that I know is going to be hotly contested. I mean, anytime I see a quarterback's ranking thing anywhere, the you know, the conversation is always contested about who the best one is at each and every position. Uh, and I'm going to tell you guys right now, I have the right list. So without further ado, like, comment, share, sub, and all that good stuff for the channel. If you enjoy what you watch, let people know what we're doing here. Let me know your opinions down below. What did I get right and wrong? And without further ado, coming in at the number five spot, uh, this is a quarterback that, you know, when it comes to conversation about him, I would say is probably the most polarizing in the league. At number five, I have quarterback Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson's numbers, we'll start with completion percentage here, sitting at 64.4%. It is the lowest on the list of the five people that I have on the list here, so we will make note of that. His passing yards, and I actually have total yardage put together here and not just his passing because a big piece of Lamar Jackson's game is the rushing side of things. He has 2,757 yards, and I also have noted here his 1,005 rushing yards as well for a total of 3,762 total yards offensively. He averages 7.3 yards per attempt, which is also the lowest on the list. He has 26 passing touchdowns, again, the lowest on the list. He does have only nine turnovers, though, which is not the lowest on the list, or I'm sorry, is not the highest on the list. Um, He also has a quarterback rating of 99.3. One game-winning drive just this past season. The reason I have that just written in there is just, you know, recent success as to coming through in the clutch because, you know, in my opinion, some quarterbacks can be clutch some years, not other years. You know, I feel like that clutch gene kind of like comes and goes with some players. Some players have always had it, you know, and I'm sure you guys know who uh, and who does not. But, you know, that's one of those things where, you know, we're in a league of what have you done for me now. So hence the reason why I'm bringing up the number. Uh, He also accumulated a total of seven rushing touchdowns with which puts rushing touchdowns, excuse me, whoa, which puts his total at um, what is that for 33 touchdowns altogether as a player um in my opinion Lamar Jackson does fit in at the number five he has been a very dynamic player over the last few years he has one of the highest total touchdowns at you know in the entire league as a player um he has put up some really good numbers whether you know you want to argue oh he's a running back or whatever those ridiculous adages have been said about him um you know I think Lamar Jackson in my opinion at this point in his career and compared to the rest that are in the league is a top five player and he is a difference maker it sounds like from what the Ravens are trying to do through their offseason in conversation and what they've been saying to the media and things like that they are really working to get him even more comfortable as a passer and only help to improve his numbers they've committed with Rashad Bateman Sammy Watkins trying to improve that offense around him and really fortify that team so I have some pretty high expectations for Lamar Jackson this year and you know I I would be lying to you if I did not say that I think Lamar Jackson is probably going to be higher up on this list by the end of the season. Things are looking really good over there in Baltimore. The defense looks good. Offense looks really good, and they've worked to improve it as well. Uh, this is a team that, you know, I think Lamar Jackson is really going to thrive in this this uh, upcoming season. Now, coming in at the number four spot, um, and, and this list is funny because it seems like it's like the past and the future kind of like going at it here. But uh, one seems to uh, be dominating the other. At the number four spot, we have Josh Allen, number 17 from the Buffalo Bills. A really good uh, completion percentage number of 69.2, 4,544 passing yards this past season. He averaged 7.9 yards per attempt. He had 37 passing touchdowns to 10 interceptions. He had a quarterback rating of 107.2. He had three game-winning drives and eight total rushing touchdowns. I was actually surprised by that. I didn't realize he had more rushing touchdowns last year than Lamar Jackson did. Um, But his entire total of touchdowns coming in at 45 with that eight added to the 37 throwing um josh allen has done a very good job year in and year out coming back better and better and better and he looked really good last year um honestly the only reason buffalo does not make it to the super bowl last year 
uh, is mainly because of the fact that, you know, there was literally no running game in Buffalo. If Buffalo can get their running game sorted out and based off their draft and what they did this offseason to work on edge rush and try to really focus on being able to get to the quarterback, which that defense really struggled to do with, on especially in the playoffs against the really good teams. I think that this Buffalo team has a very strong case to be the team representing the AFC in the Super Bowl next year. But obviously that is months and months away, but a little bit of a like tidbit of my mind and kind of what I'm thinking of for the postseason this coming year. But I have Josh Allen sitting at number four. I think it's a really good spot for him because the three people ahead of him are, in my opinion, leaps and bounds the best in the business at this current moment. And coming in at number three, and this is where the list is probably going to start to get controversial a little bit, but, you know, it is what it is. At number three, I have quarterback Tom Brady of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, before anyone starts yelling at me in the comments, you know, he just won the Super Bowl and blah, 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 and whatever it is you want to say about the whole Tom Brady thing, do not get me wrong. I'm a fan of Tom Brady. I respect what he does. I love what he does. The fact that he went to Tampa Bay and he has the pull to get the people that he did to come into Tampa Bay. And, you know, he was able to come into a new team and in his first year, take that team to the Super Bowl, become the second quarterback to win a Super Bowl with two different teams. Uh, I mean, there's not much you can't say about Tom Brady. But in terms of just like the quarterback position and how it is played, I would say he is the guy at number three. His numbers look really good. 66.3% completion percentage. He has 4,740 total yards. Um, I'm sorry. No, that's not the right numbers there. I'm reading off the wrong list here. 65.7% completion percentage, 4,633 yards, and a 7.6 yards per attempt. He also had 40 touchdowns, 12 picks, which is the highest on the list here. He had 102.2 QBR, three game-winning drives, and three rushing touchdowns, so his touchdowns total in at 43 total altogether. Um, Tom Brady is you know, the last of like the pure pocket passers, in my opinion. There are quarterbacks, obviously, that are still, or excuse me, not the last, but the last of the elite, elite pocket passers in the league where the NFL is starting to turns more t- turn more towards like athletic quarterbacks that can also, you know, do things outside the pocket when you look at like what Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, those younger, more elite, um, younger guys that are, you know, doing things with their legs that, you know, guys like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, yeah, I don't know, Joe. I mean, I don't know if I want to say Joe Montana, like Dan, like I don't know, the, like all quarterbacks at some point in their career maybe moved a little bit in the pocket, but not quite like this new age style of quarterback that we're getting. And I think Tom Brady's the the real last of the elite that just kind of sits in the pocket and dissects a defense and you know cuts things up. Um, I, I think he fits in at number three because the two guys that I have ahead of him are, in my opinion, playing the position the best ever in terms of just talent and athleticism and how the position is done. Um, And best ever might even be a little bit of a stretch. I I say that, but I say that with like, uh, I'm kind of biting my tongue as I say it. But I mean, coming in at number two, at this point, I, he, I don't want to say he's the most overhyped player ever because he deserves all the hype he's getting, but he is getting more attention than I've ever seen a player get in my entire life. Patrick Mahomes, man, I mean, he does he does the quarterback position better than just about anybody any other day that isn't, you know, the guy I have coming in after him. But, uh, you know, this picture to my left here is probably the biggest statement for just how good of a player he is. That man was running miles trying to keep his team into the Super Bowl, you know, and people say he has Andy Reid. People say he has, you know, so much personnel around him. It still takes a fantastic quarterback to do what he does. He hits that throw on target, or I'm sorry, let me point to my left here. He hits that throw to my left. It wasn't caught, but he hit that throw on the dot. And there was another throw where he got spun around that he also hit that did not get caught. He made two of the wildest on-target throws I have ever seen in NFL history, um, and they weren't they weren't complete. And if they were complete, we never would have been hearing the end of it, honestly. But um, I mean, if you look at his numbers, Patrick Mahomes is sitting at sixty-six point three percent completion percentage this past season, forty-seven hundred forty yards, eight point one yards per attempt, thirty-eight touchdowns, six picks. 108.2 QBR, three game-winning drives last year, and a couple of rushing touchdowns to boot to take his total to 40. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is the future. There's really not much you can say else about that. I mean, and he honestly is the present at this point as well with the way he plays the game. Um, I, I, I cannot believe 
the type of player that Patrick Mahomes has turned into. I remember when he got drafted, I remember him sitting behind Alex Smith, and I was one of those people being like, wow, I cannot believe the Chiefs just let go of Alex Smith for a guy that started one game for them last season. Um, And boy, did I eat my words. Patrick Mahomes will continue to dominate this league for the next 10 plus years, minimum in my opinion. Will he put up the numbers he did that year? He put up 50 touchdowns ever again? Who knows? Uh, But as long as there's a strong supporting cast around him and a strong coach leading the way for him, I have no reason to believe that, you know, he's looking at two, three, four more MVPs in his career and maybe another Super Bowl title or two minimum. Uh, But that is who I have sitting at number two. And then coming in at number one, pretty much a foregone conclusion. If you've been watching anything about the NFL, I'm sure you know who's coming up next year. Number one, I have quarterback Aaron Rodgers. I do expect him to play this season, which is why I had him at number one. I almost did not put him on this list. I was not close, but like there was a con- there was a point when I was considering the list, and I almost thought that you know he wasn't going to play. But I've been holding on to the quarterback conversation list for a while now because I wanted to see how things evolved through this off season and what was going on with Aaron Rodgers. Um, And like this list is not only me ranking the quarterback, but also me kind of stating like where I think they are going to stand as they go through this next season in terms of ranking as a quarterback. So it's not just like for last year, but it's like what I think going into this year uh, and how I feel they'll perform in terms of being rated. But uh, Aaron Rodgers, man, talk about having one of the best years I've ever seen from a quarterback. 70.7% completion percentage. He had 4,299 yards, eight point, a monstrous 8.2 yards per attempt here. He had 48 passing touchdowns to five interceptions. That's a ridiculous interception to touchdown ratio there. A QBR of 121.5, monster number there as well. Uh, He had two game-winning drives and three rushing touchdowns to boot, so the dude totaled 51 total through the season. Um, I mean, Aaron Rodgers played at the highest level you possibly could last season. He played it better than everyone else, and with the chip that this guy has on his shoulder, if he's going to be playing like this again another year, I have no reason to believe that he would not win another MVP going into this next year. I think Aaron Rodgers is so athletically gifted and so talented at the position. He is probably the most talented quarterback we've ever seen. Uh, And that's not knocking Tom Brady. I think Tom Brady is the goat of the position. But Aaron Rodgers, in terms of just talent and the way he plays the position, is probably hands down the best we've ever seen in the NFL. And that's coming from a Peyton Manning fan and myself. Um, but that is what I think for my top five quarterbacks. I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Fire away. Let me know what I got right and wrong on this list, who should and should not be here and where they should be on the list. If you think all five of these guys belong here, but that is it for me. I appreciate y'all for watching. I'll catch you guys in another video. Have a good one.